through things for the first time, falling in love for the first time, having your heart broken for the first time, you know, seeing something for the first time, experiencing something for the first time. I feel in those situations it really shows you who you are because you kind of have to start again from ground zero and like as a musician like it sort of felt very similar to that like having to start again and, and build yourself back up to a point where you go this is who I am and I want to release it. This is, this is this moment in my life and I'm happy to have it out there. I'm Harper Finn and this is the making of Newcomer. Newcomer sort of came as I sort of started feeling certain things about who I was at the time and what, who I wanted to be and the music I was making and Newcomer sort of started to encapsulate what I was writing and who I was and who I still am. Everything I've ever started has always been something that's come from me sitting at the piano for half an hour, 45 minutes, and just playing how you feel. You just sort of put that into the keys and into the music. And I've written songs completely like that, and other times I've, I've started ideas like that and have walked into the studio and then we've fleshed it out more. So the credit process differs a lot, but melodically and emotionally, piano is where I feel most connected. I'm always kind of pulling from rock, pop, soul, hip-hop, all kinds of different music and just trying to take all the best elements, the elements that I like from each and kind of putting it all together to make some kind of song that I feel is fairly genreless. I think this EP, uh, it, it kind of spans many different sounds and many different avenues but ultimately they are all sounds that I like and I sort of feel like this is my collage of all the music that I like. Dark Side of the Summer, it's about a relationship that didn't end great. How the, the summer ends is very much how you kind of look back on how, how the summer was. And there's a line in that song, I saw you drive past, chased by the thunder. And I mean, that really happened. I saw them drive past and it just sort of felt like the storm clouds. They were bringing in the storm clouds. They were bringing in the cold with them. That was a song that I really lived, uh, lived through. <laughs> this is made a good song though, yeah. I wrote that song over Zoom actually, it was one of the first songs I ever wrote over Zoom and I wrote it with this really fantastic writer, um, her name's Michelle Buzz. Michelle did some drums, I played some piano, I sang it, Michelle sings on it as well, there's a very, you know, you can hear it at the end which I'm really, really proud and stoked to have her on the song because she's such a fantastic singer, you know, it's a song that I'm just I'm really, really proud of and kind of, you know, turning a negative, real negative, sad experience into, you know, something that you can really enjoy and want to listen to all the time. This song is about the last party I went to when I finished high school. School had just finished that Friday and it was like the Saturday. We are all super excited about, we're about to have the best summer of our lives, you know, we've got our whole lives ahead of us. And so I, I went to that party looking for someone in particular. Ended up going home by myself because it didn't work out at the party. Walked home by myself and where I grew up. It's very quiet. If you walk home at midnight, you won't see a single person. I can pretend I was walking home feeling a little bit like, oh man, I wish it had turned out a little bit better than this. And it was like a full moon, like a really, really big, bright full moon. And I remember just looking up and feeling like, oh, I'm having a, like, it's like I'm talking to the moon. It was a very visual song, very, like I saw it in my head before I kind of wrote it and, and played it on the piano. So. That song was, yeah, was really inspired by, by that event. It was the first song I wrote and produced myself, so it was very much like a learning how to use Ableton and, and how to record and how to use synthesizers and how to program certain things, program drums and basses and how to record vocals. So like the song was like my kind of crash course into recording and producing. The making of it was really like a just experimenting and I loved doing it because it was like, it, it was just fun. Different Skies, well it's, it's a love song and it's about a relationship um, that has to end. Not because you want it to, but because it has to. The future isn't looking bright, but 
I'd never been to Germany, never been to Berlin. Here I was, riding with Toby, who's, you know, an amazing, crazy, free spirit in the studio, and it was just one of those ones where he just reaches for an instrument, grabs it, and just doesn't even ask you, just plays it straight away, and it just felt really exciting, spontaneous. But the lyrics took a bit longer, so I try and you know, transcribe what was I hearing in the melody, it sounds like I'm singing this, and then, you know, the idea of, you know, I want to believe it, we won't stay apart, I, I want to believe we'll make it back to the start, started coming through, and then I was like, oh yeah, this is a song about right place, wrong time. I want to was so far away from New Zealand, it was the furthest I'd ever been. You know, the idea of separation, you know, once you cross the date line, your daytime is my nighttime. All those kind of feelings of, of being, you know, you know, on opposite ends of the earth, but still thinking of somebody. What are they doing? Where are they right now? What's the sky look like above them? Yeah, it was, it was a song that took a little bit longer to write than other songs. You know, ultimately it was always there, it was there kind of just waiting to be written. I wrote this song with Alex Burnett and he, he was really great because he kind of, he wanted to put me out of my comfort zone and he wanted to make me uncomfortable and he wanted to do things differently to how I normally had normally do them. He's always like, you write on the piano, let's write this song on the guitar, you know. You write with lots of chords, let's not write with a lot of chords. Let's, let's, let's try and do things opposite. It was a song we wrote in 25 minutes, 30 minutes, and it came really, really quickly. Probably the fastest song I've ever written in my life. And the kind of, the idea of the song kind of matched that. It was like, not overthinking it, not overthinking a relationship, not overthinking the feelings, just being very in the moment and going with it. If you want to dance to it, dance to it. If you want to fall in love, fall in love. If you want to, you know, kiss me, kiss me. Like, it's that kind of idea of just like, reacting and, and acting upon it straight away. Like, I think that's, that song is, is very much like that. We're all frustrated. Everyone's feeling sick of certain things, you know. And I want to dance away these days. I just broke up with my boyfriend. Or I broke up with my girlfriend. Like, you know, I want to dance away these days. That's my. That's how I react to things. That's how I. That's how I release my energy. It's I always dance. Yeah. Dance away these days is about turning frustration uh, that you have with the world and the way things are, and and turning that into something enjoyable. I wrote that song with Tobias in Germany. We were both went, oh, let's write a piano ballad, we don't have that. And we did a whole version that was just piano, and we had it like that, I came back to New Zealand. I lived, was still living with that, and then that's when the pandemic hit. That frustration I was speaking to kind of started to build up on me, and then I went, oh man, I just, oh, you know, I, want, I, want, I need a way to release this energy, and added these really fast drums. I wanna float in space. It's like 176 beats per minute. It's the fastest song I've ever written. And Cole MGN, who co-produced the track and, and did all the drum work for it, um, put in those whips. In the chorus, naturally, I kind of went like this. And then from that, it kind of went, let's do a dance video, let's get dancers, let's involve a choreographer, because I'd always been super interested in that world and I'd always watched it from afar and I'd always wanted to be involved in it and so this was the right time to do it. So I want to be someone you fall in love with tonight. I should be the one who's running back to you. I'm torn up waiting on the runway. Runway was a lot about just being on a plane and sitting on the runway and I think, you know, for me, sitting on the runway is super dramatic because it's like, you know, you're going, is, should I have left right now? No going back now. And you're sitting there, you're strapped in and you're just like, you know, and it's that kind of feeling of like, you know, looking out the window and going, you know, someone I want to be with is down there and I'm, I'm leaving. I'm not staying long. I wanted another dance song that hit quite hard and had a kind of that element of darkness that I, that I like to go to for my music. And um, we played the piano and we reverbed it out and we side-chained it so it feels like, the song feels like it's expanding and contracting a lot, which I thought rhythmically made me want to kind of move. And yeah, it's a song that just kind of encapsulates that whole period of time for me. Mm. Good For Me is one of the earlier songs I wrote it's about a breakup for sure. And it's about feeling betrayed and feeling 
like who you know who was this person were they really looking out for me was this person really there for me the whole time you know that kind of feeling when you break up with somebody and you go did I ever know that person I felt more alone than I ever felt before and it was yeah strange for someone to turn into a complete stranger so quickly and to, and to doubt a lot of what they'd ever said the video for Good For Me was shot at, at the studio in Auckland called Stebbings, which is like one of the oldest studios in Auckland, having duplicates of myself in the studio, all recording and writing the song, and make it feel like that in-between state, where you're kind of seeing clones of yourself, all writing the song and singing it together. <laughs> yeah. The song is sort of speaking about words of wisdom from the people you trust and the people that you love and don't get ahead of yourself she said that's kind of that's definitely a, a kind of a dedication towards that and I wrote that song completely by myself on the piano a lot of synthesizers in there that I've never used before the song happened in my head and it was it was play, you know it was the idea of wishing we could be somewhere else we kind of tried to make a dream like city in the background I was in this tiny confine this tiny little apartment and it was very much representing a world that I was living in in my head. You know, this idea of being trapped. And you know, all you can see is through the window. All you can see is outside. We shot a lot of the video in reverse. So Selena, who uh, danced with me in the video, we choreographed the whole thing in reverse and then performed it forwards. So we unreversed it. There's a nostalgic kind of familiarity with it, but it also feels like it's in a world we've never seen before. I think that's always something that I play on, that kind of idea of mixing something familiar and reassuring or comforting with something that's like, whoa, where has this come from? Like, it's, when those two worlds meet, I feel like that's such a, such a sweet point. There's a lot more to come and there's you know a lot more experiences to be shared and a lot more things for me to say. This is very much the first step and I hope you know some people will be able to relate to the sentiments and the, that feeling of going through things for the first time and want to hear what you know what else is to come from that. You know.